the Savior say the high strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray when you are somebody who is not loaded with the knowledge of this word of God the devil can talk to you right there the devil can talk to you now I want you to understand one thing, there's one secret when we talk of God talking to people. God talking to people. One thing about it is He talks first, then the devil talks later. The devil only comes to contradict what God has said. to 
bring to us this great light which is revelation in Jesus name amen so I want us to to see something when we talk of hearing God we have to take this thing into consideration and these things we have to take into consideration is when God is talking or when God speaks when God speaks there are two things we actually hear there are two things we can hear or we can get from him when he speaks one we can hear his word and we can hear his voice praise God so you can either hear the, the word of God or you can hear the, the voice of God hallelujah but I will, I will, as I will teach us we shall get more understanding of it because uh, uh, it's, it's likely true that you can hear God by his word and you can hear God by his voice or you can hear God uh, from his word or through his word and you can hear God through his voice hallelujah when I talk of voice I'm not just talking of I'm not talking of anything but just as you can hear my voice you can hear the voice of God hallelujah so just pay attention now you know you you can ask yourself or you may ask that what's the difference? What's the difference between God's voice and God's word? I know that's the question you might be asking. So now what is the, the word of God? If I tell us that we can hear God from his words or from his voice, what do I mean? Now, the very first thing as I told us is that God speaks and when he speaks, we hear his voice or we hear his words. So, with the words which you can hear from God, these have to do with the, the word, the written word this written word this written word this is the one of the greatest ways through which God speaks God speaks through his word hallelujah and so if you study the Bible and you read your Bible as you study God will speak to you and you discover that most of the reasons you you find people say they are in obedience to the word of God or they are in, in obedience to God is because they study this word of God, they study this book, the Bible, they study because the words which are written here, they are the words from the mouth of God. And they were being written by inspiration. God inspired great men not ordinary men they were great men spirit filled men men who were deep into into the holy in fact the holy ghost men who were inspired by the holy ghost himself to write these things they did not write it out of their intelligence they did not write it as a result of their knowledge in academic but they received an injection they receive knowledge from heaven to write these things and so most of them most of them upon writing they they wrote and they did not even understand what they were writing they did not understand what they were even writing why because God gave them the words and the words were not for them or the that which God gave to them, it was meant for a certain generation and some generations. 
And by the grace of God, you and I, we are privileged to be among those who this word is coming to them. And so God, through his word, can speak to you. You can open your Bible and you begin to study. You might think that you're reading a book, but as you're studying, not reading only, you know, there's a difference between reading and studying. As you get to study while reading, then you will get understanding, deep understanding, a deeper understanding of what is written. And as you begin to set your mind to understand, that's how God begins to speak to you. Praise God. God begins to speak to you. And one thing I, I so discovered when it comes to do with this word is that every word God spoke, even the words he is speaking today and the words he will speak, they are already written. They are already written in this word. And that is why, you see, the Bible makes us to understand that we ought to, to examine things. We ought to check prophecy, to judge prophecies and other things from the world. Because whatever has to be, has been. Whatever has to be, has been. Praise God. So, so the word of God is what God said or what God spoke. He spoke in time past. And the same things, you see, when, when the Bible tells us of God being the unchangeable God, He says, I am the omni presence, the omnipotent and the omni science. Thus, I am the all present, the all knowing. And He talked also of the the it talks also of the all-powerful, that's the omnipotent. So, so God now, when we talk of him being a God who does not change, he does not change, it, it makes us to, to come into the place of understanding that God, just as he has been God in time past, he is the same God today, and he's going to be the same God tomorrow. Just as he has been a loving God, he's going to continue being a loving God. Hallelujah. So the words he spoke, he did not speak those words and maybe it gets to, he's not like a man, you know. That's one thing we have to understand. God is not like a man who may speak today and tomorrow he begins to regret, why did I say this? Why did I say this? No. God's ways are perfect. His ways are right. His ways are never to be questioned. No questioning of His ways. His ways are not questionable. His ways are perfect. His ways are right. So whatever He has written in the book, which is the Bible, they are the things He said and they are the same things he is saying today. And even the things we shall hear tomorrow, the things of the future, they will be the same things. So all these things, they were being written. They were being written. So I'm saying all these things to make us know that God actually speaks through his word. So if you are a believer, if you are someone who, does, who wants to hear God, and you don't study the Bible, you don't study the Word of God, then you are making a very big error. You are making a very big mistake. If you say you want to hear God and you don't study the Word of God, then you are making a very big mistake. Do you know what? This is it's not like God will not speak to you. He will speak to you. God is a talking God. He talks. He speaks. So, what 
I tell it to be very, very dangerous for you to say you want to hear God without you studying the Word of God, without you having yourself into alliance with the Word of God. You know, you make a big risk because while thinking that you're listening just like this, I may sit like this and I begin to listen. I begin to listen. Just as we, you know, just as we sit when in the prophetic at times when you are in your cool moments, you, you, you have to maintain total quietness after making some prayers. You have to maintain some total quietness. And it is during that quiet time after which you have prayed with your knowledge and you have prayed in tongues and now you get some time where the Holy Spirit himself steps in greatly and he begins to talk to you and he begins to reveal to you things. So at that time, when when you are somebody who is not loaded with the knowledge of this word of God, the devil can talk to you right there. The devil can talk to you. Are you getting me? You can sit somewhere just after your prayers and God is there to talk to you or you are quiet to listen to what God will be saying. And while you are doing that, the devil also comes to talk to you. Now, I want you to understand one thing. There's one secret when we talk of God talking to people. God talking to people. One thing about it is he talks first, then the devil talks later. The devil only comes to contradict what God has said. Remember the Garden of Eden. God had told Adam and Eve this fruit, even though God spoke through Adam, and Eve came and these words were given to him or to her also. These words were given to her also. Adam must have told Eve. And so, look at what happened. God told them, this fruit thou shalt not eat. But you can eat of all the fruits in the garden. But this of this tree, you will not pluck of any fruit. I know so many people have interpreted, they have misinterpreted this portion of the scripture. Just that I don't have enough time, but I think as God gives me the grace, as he gives me the time, then I, when I talk of grace, I'm talking of so many things which can only occur when God permits. That's what I'm saying. So, so I will, I will maybe teach us what this fruit was all about because I hear of so many people in their ignorance. They say it was this, it was that. But when I will bring up to us this revelation, you will get understanding of what this fruit was all about. Praise God. And so, when God told them that you will not eat of this tree or you will not pluck of any fruit from this tree because the day you will pluck or eat of the fruit from this tree then you will surely die and these were the words God spoke to them now look at something look at something the devil now coming in a simple time form came met them and had to speak to them. Has God indeed said, Thou should? Look, the devil knows how he comes to you, Christians, and to us believers. We are Christians, we are believers in the Lord. Hallelujah. So, when the devil is coming to us, he's not coming to us as though he's coming to ordinary people. He knows that we are men of capacity and men of value, men of great potentials, men who understand scriptures, you know. So he does not come to us as though he's coming to ordinary people, he's coming to unbelievers, no. He comes to us 
in the capacity where he sees us as great men and women of God. So when he's coming to us, he prepares. The devil does not just surface like that, he prepares. And how does he tempt us? Or how does he come to us? He come to us through the same words of God. So he comes to you and he will say, did God indeed say you should not eat? He said, oh, it's not true, it's not true. Even though he said that, but the reason why he said that, so he will try to convince you, you know, and he will even quote you scriptures. Remember when he was tempting Jesus. Remember. So that's why it's very, very, very bad for, for you to say you want to hear God because I'm teaching us now on hearing God. I'm, I'm teaching us on this great thing because I'm not talking to some great men of God, to you, my prophets, apostles, evangelists, I mean, bishops and the, the teachers of the world, great intercessors. I just, I just think I'm teaching all these teachings I'm giving to us because a good number of us are making use of it and want to make use of it. So it is very important for us to understand. So if you don't have the knowledge of God's word, the devil can come to you and why God has spoken or after when God has spoken to you, maybe a few seconds after that, the devil can speak to you. It's just like, now, you are led by the spirit or in your spirit, God has spoken to you that pray for that sick woman. This woman who is sick, pray for this woman and she will be healed. And few seconds after that, the devil comes to you. Do you indeed intend praying for this woman? Can't you see her situation? Can't you see that she does not even talk? Have you ever seen this kind of person? Look, she's not even talking. Huh? So the devil comes giving you reasons, trying to convince you. And if you're someone who is not given to the word, someone who does not have the, the riches of the world in his or her spirit, then you develop doubt. You develop what? Doubt. And when this doubt comes in, that's what is going to, to cause you not to yield or not to act according to the word or the voice or the word of the Lord. Praise God. So, God speaks through his word. You have to study his word if you must hear God. You have to study his word because he speaks through his word. Praise God. God does what? He speaks through his word. The Bible. God speaks. Uh, I remember sometimes when I, I sleep, you know, I sleep. It has happened several times. And I will sleep and write in the dream in bed. I will, I will get a dream and I will see something like I will get a scripture in the dream. I will get a scripture and it will show me something like Matthew 12 11 and immediately I will get up. I will stay up now from the dream and immediately the, the, the scripture which I received in the dream will be, it will be so fresh in my mind. And as what I do, I always write. I just try, you know, we, we as great men of God, you know, one thing about this issue of hearing God is those who always listen to God, you have to always keep a notebook. You see, you have to always keep, you see, this is a notebook now, you see, this is a notebook. If you see these places, 
how I've written. You look at other places, you'll find me, even though this is not my dream book, I have my dream book. I call it dream book because there I write my dreams. Even uh, I've been staying with other friends in many, that's many a times I've been staying with friends, I've been staying with my brothers, my sisters, I've been sleeping the same room with them at times. And one thing I believe so many of them notice about me is when I get up from bed, especially when you get up early morning and you find me sitting on the bed, don't greet me. It's just my policy. Don't greet me. Why? I don't like distract. I don't like to talk when I get up from the bed. I don't like to talk. I don't want to even see you. I don't even want to see you. But if you appear, then let it be that you have appeared. But I don't want to talk. And you know, when I get up, the first thing I do is I pick up my pen, which is already slotted into my notebook. And the first thing is I start to write down what I had in the dream. So this is what happened. I write it down. So when God's, God is speaking to you, you have to write. I will tell us several ways God speaks, you know. I will tell us, but don't forget, today I'm really talking on these two things of hearing God. And I told us that for us to hear God, or uh, when God speaks, we can hear either His word or His voice. So I'm really emphasizing on the word of God because God speaks through His word. So when, when I sleep, just as I told us, most often, God speaks to me through scriptures. It's not like I get his voice talking to me. Daniel, I'm the Lord your God. This, 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 this. It's not like that, but he comes at times and he just drops a word into my spirit like a scripture. And once I get up from the dream and I open the scripture, I hear him talking. I hear him talking. That's why if you want to hear God, don't sleep like every other man. Don't sleep maybe, no matter the time you sleep, don't wake up same time with normal people. If normal people are getting up at 5 o'clock, you should get up by 3. You should get up by 3.30, maximum 4. You should have at least an hour before them. Most often, the people I used to be with, they will always, you discover, some will even ask, do you sleep? Yeah, I sleep. Just that most often, you only see me after when I'm up. Because I make sure I don't be the, the second person to get up. Always the first to have cool times. Cool times. To write my dream for somebody not to come and touch me and say it is done, get up, get up. So, so how can some of you, you want to hear God but you sleep a lot. You sleep a lot until your neighbor or the person sleeping with you on the same bed will touch you. Uh, choice, choice, get up. Get up. It is time for us to prepare and go to school. It's not like that. So, always Get up as early as possible to hear what God will say to you. Hallelujah. So you can get in, you can get scriptures like this. Just as I told us, God speaks to me most often, giving me scriptures. And when I get up, the scriptures, I get to read, I get to read, I get to read. Then at times, not just scriptures, he does not just give me scriptures, he drops a message into my spirit, then I judge the, the message. He drops it, you understand? Then I, I judge, I judge the message. 
how do I judge it? I said, oh, not like I go and open scriptures. You know, the word of God, when you study the word of God, it stays in you. That's what happens. The word of God does what? It stays in you. The word of God. It stays inside of you. That's why the Bible makes us to understand that we should study and meditate on the word. The more you study and you meditate on the word, it stays. Now, you can, you can stand like this with empty hands, but you are not empty. You may stand like this and you begin to preach. Maybe people just meet you and you are led to speak to them the word of God. You don't have a Bible there. And suddenly you just start ministering to them. And you maybe start revelational messages or something to them that they will look and they will say, this man, this man. Did. Why? Because the word is already in you. You have taken this whole Bible. You know, God told us, he says, a time is coming where my words will not just be written on tablets, but I will seal them in, in your hearts. So when you get Le Kabradosh Ibrahanta, when you get the word of God like this, you study and you meditate, it stays in you. And the Holy Spirit of God now begins to empower your spirit through the same words you have in you. The richer you are in the world, the more powerful and dangerous you become in the spiritual realm. Praise God. So I was saying this to just let you know that God speaks through the word, the Bible. So endeavor to study the word of God. Hallelujah. So in my other video, I'll be speaking to us, I'll be teaching us the other side of God speaking through his voice. Hallelujah where you can hear the voice of God. And I will tell us actually how the voice comes to you. There are different ways which God speaks and you hear his voice speaking to you. There are so many ways, you know. Uh, I just, I just, one place, this video is already available. It's already available. Just after, after listening to this message, just look for it. Look for this same video. So just go to hearing the voice of God and you will get the video. Hallelujah. God bless you. Jesus, baby, oh.